Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm going to walk you through some techniques for multi-level building using our Cities Untold Low Town pieces. Let's dive in. Everything you're about to see are handmade prototypes cast in-house in resin. They are often imperfect or even unfinished. The versions you'll receive will be factory finished in Dwarvenite and will be much more precise and consistent. Viewer discretion is advised. So one of the most fun things about uh, using terrain in your games is the verticality, right? Being the ability to have a three-dimensional game using this Z-axis and its elevation for dynamic combat, for interesting line of sight, for discoveries, right? Finding a thing that's hidden behind it and up and around uh, and encouraging your players to think three-dimensionally. Um, so to that end, we're going to show you some of the techniques of how you can kind of maximize your multi-level builds uh, and as you're building, thinking about, hey, how is this going to make uh, this encounter more dynamic, more engaging, and more three-dimensional? Um, so I'm starting with a uh, with just an eight by eight build here. It's uh, just four four by four floors, and I tend to put all the posts in and throw some walls in. Um, I'm probably going to pop stuff out and change it as I go, but it's easy for me to start with four four by fours with posts in there, and then I can just sort of mix and match as I go. In general, when I build, I'll kind of have an idea, I'll sketch it out, and then I'll and I'll adjust it, and then I'll go back and keep tweaking it. So like, you don't need to get it all right the first time, just sort of play with it and tweak as you go. Um, another technique you'll find is you'll be able to sort of put layers on and off and audition, like audition it with layers on and then take them off and adjust and whatnot. And then with our new biscuit system, uh, generally I'm not gonna start biscuiting stuff together until I kind of really have it in a spot that I love it um, and go from there. So I'm going to start with a uh, with an 8x8. And because it's multi-level, let's just put another level right on top to begin with. I've put another 8x8 together, and I know that I want to put the uh, the dangle room in here. So I've I preemptively built that in, but otherwise we're just working with two square 8x8s. Um, one thing to think about as you're building up is that you want some support for the layers above uh, if you don't know exactly what's going to happen, in this case, I just put a, uh, a stair pillar in there. So that's whatever we end up above. I can move this around and make sure I've got some support if we need it. Uh, in this case, we still have all these all these posts and all these walls in here. So there's tons of support as we're going. And you can eventually remove a bunch of the supports once you kind of lock in what you're doing and everything's biscuited together. But as you're going, you want to think about supports. You also want to think about how are, if you're, if you're having combat inside or movement inside or even just exploring buildings, you want to think about how are people getting from one floor of the building to the other. So in this case, I have a, uh, a stair pole that I left down there, and I already put the stairs in preemptively, and then I'm assuming I'm going to go up somewhere around here. Maybe we switch around like this so you can kind of go up continuously um, like that. So you think about how, how, are the, uh, how are characters transitioning between floors. All right, so now we've got a uh, nice, clean square 4x4. Four uh, but it's not that exciting and not that dynamic. So let's uh, let's right out of the gate. Let's pull this thing. Let's pull this thing out and center this. So now I want to do something. Let's put a door over here. All right. So if we if we knock out that four by four, now we have a four inch here with an eight inch over top. We have some neat cantilevered uh, action. Right. So now these are really expanded, extended out, hanging out there and. It means you can have your mini under there, and it breaks your breaks your line of sight from here. It's harder to target the fireball and whatnot. You get your comic gets already much more interesting if there's places your minis can go hide and seek cover. Uh, but it maybe it's it's a lot of overhang. So let's let's try putting let's justify some of that space. So I've taken a two by four floor here, and I put our new decorative banister corner post in there, and let's just slide that under. So now we've kind of justify this overhang right there's beams holding up it's like a little porch or something we have we have a door in there yeah so we have a door in there so this would be like a maybe the area you would enter the building from so that looks that already looks kind of cool uh one thing you can do to make it look even more cool with uh with this system since we're working with generally two inches or four inches uh if you offset something by one inch you get a really cool overhang so in this case if we take this six inch segment we have here, and we slide this off by one inch. So now it's it's off center from the eight by, we'll have really nice overhang from our upper floors like this. And so that's really pleasing to look at, right? It feels like a medieval 
uh, billing. And then you can further feed that with this, uh, this corbel row. This is going to have pegs in it, but the prototype doesn't have it yet. So you can put that under something like that to uh, help hold it up, help transition it. It looks really, uh, really neat. So you can kind of do this, this offset by one inch trick all the time. And it, uh, always gives fun overhanging results. So let's also think about, uh, let's, let's already, let's, let's get people a different way to come in here, right? So if we have a, one door in here, if we have multiple entrances on multiple levels, that's going to encourage fun multi-level play. So I'm thinking we're going to put a uh, entrance over here. Let's slot out this window wall. We'll put in a door wall, something like that. And then we could put either, we could put, this is 61 millimeter stairs. We could biscuit that on like that. Or if we want to have it a little more spicy, we could throw the uh, uh, corner railing platform there for a 90 degree turn and then pop it in there. That's already a little more exciting. And then there's a nice landing out there. You could you could stop and shoot. You got some cover from here or whatnot. So that's kind of a, a fun way to get on up and out. And it's, again, making the... Uh, the whole build is already more interesting, right? You could hide underneath this. You could be standing on this. You've got some cover coming from the other sides, but not from here. Um, so it's already getting more dynamic. Uh, but let's give it some more. Let's give it some more overhang, right? We've got we've got a pretty flat front here. So let's let's do something on the front. So if we take we take this is a uh, narrow scaffolding platform with a four inch rail and a pair of narrow rails on either side. Throw a couple of biscuits in there, and let's just pop that right onto the side. So now we have a uh, we have a neat balcony up there. Let's get a way to get in there. So we're gonna pop this uh, window out. Let's got a door. Pop the door in. Um, now there's another way in and out on this level. Uh, if we wanted to get even more wild, we could. We could take another one of these platforms and we could put it here. Let's try. Let's see what this looks like. So we take a corner corner platform and a narrow platform for a trailing. These are prototypes that don't have their pegs yet, so we have to use a little white stick, but it will give you the idea. Um, then we could pop this off, and let's audition it. We could we could attach that whole thing for a uh, a wraparound balcony, uh, but maybe it's too much because maybe I want to break up. Let's break it up. So we're not going to, uh, I'm going to pop that guy on, but we saw what it looked like. Let's instead, let's do an overhang. Let's do something out here, All right? So we haven't played on this side yet too much. So I'm going to take, we got a couple of our diagonals. So we have a pack that's the poet's nook, which is a couple of these guys and, and the ruse. Uh, and this looks good. You can do this on the ground floor, which looks neat. Uh, but it's even cooler if we suspend it up on the floor above. So let's, just pop that wall out, grab a couple of flat pegs. Then we'll peg that right onto the side. All right, so we'll pop that thing on like that. And now we have a pretty neat overhang. If we want, we could put we could put the corbel row underneath there that comes with it, which looks really neat. Like I love the I love the look. Let's see. I love how that looks for the overhang. Or we could spice it up even more with let's put the bay window underneath there. And I really like how these sort of stagger so gently. So if that was something like that, we have a really nice little stepped overhang, right? A little, a smaller cantilever. And then we could, if we like all this, let's pop out this wall. That can be continuous. We could add a biscuit there once we, if we commit to that one. That looks pretty neat. All right, this level's looking pretty lively, right? We have uh, interesting overhang here. We've got outdoors playable space there. We have an entrance here. We have an entrance here. We have an entrance here with some outdoor playable space. Let's look at, we have a cool overhang there. Also, um, let's put something over here. So let's get a, get another bay window, pop in a couple of biscuits and we'll pop that Pop that right into the side of the building. Pop out that wall. Uh, now we have a neat overhang there. And let's put let's put the straight corbel row under there. 
this layer is looking pretty good. So let's go up, let's go up one more layer uh, and see what happens. And I'm thinking, let's uh, let's start doing roofs. Often the uh, if you're doing a larger building like this is eight by eight. If you just did all one big giant roof, it's a lot of roof in one place, and it can be uh, it can be not as interesting as if you stagger it on a couple levels. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to put one roof level here. We'll go up another story in this building before we get to the next roof. Um, this will also, if you're, you know, when you're building, think about where your players are going to be. If you assume that you as a DM are going to be here and your players are going to be out around the rest of the table, put the higher stuff in the back and lower stuff in the front. So if we're tearing our roofs up like this, they'll be able to see a lot more of the playable space. All right. So before we actually go up to this next level, let's just check our level below uh, quickly. So I'm going to pop this, these stairs off so I can get in here. These prototypes don't have their pegs yet, so we gotta wait to stick them on. So as soon as I slip, so this is looking pretty good. Let's open up this. Let's take out this wall so we can flow here. So we've got a door here. We've got a door here. Playable says we can take that one out. All right. So now we have some actual some rooms that make sense in here. There's a door here, door here, door here. That's looking good. We got a window there. That we had this overhang here, so we're gonna put a um, we're gonna put a corbel uh, facade. Was it post facade over there? Because I think that'll look neat. When we put the um, well, we put the dangle room over it. It'll help sort of transition those two together. Uh, and we could biscuit these things in. Oh no, they're offset by an inch. We could biscuit these to each other if we wanted to. But I want to still stay loose and see if it might change yet. So we'll see what happens. But I feel pretty good about how that layer is looking. And we've got support for the upper layer as well as stairs. So we'll pop this guy back on. You know, good. Has that look? The corbel looks really neat down there. Lantern's looking good. I think we have. Uh, yeah, this feels neat. All right, so let's go up to the next layer. So we're going to try a tiered roof approach. So if we know we're going to have a room in back, let's take we have just a plain old square 4x8 here, lining up the, uh, we've got a stair hole here, so that'll line up these stairs. We're getting these next stairs coming up here. That'll work. Uh, got some walls in there. I think that all makes sense. Uh, we know that let's let's end this pot nook here and add the roof. Uh, ultimately, these will have biscuit holes. These prototypes don't yet, so we can biscuit it to the side. But for now, we're just going to use throw it on there with gravity, so that'll look good, something like that. And then on this side, uh, we could put the roof for this, or we could go up one more level. Let's put the hey balcony. Pop the uh, two-inch railing in there. Throw some biscuits in there. Pop that into the side, so that flows really nicely up. And then we'll take this out and let's have a uh, let's put a little door there. So we'll have a it's a way out to the balcony. So what's exciting here is also each of these balconies provides yet another way to sort of get in or out of the building. Right, so players could go up with a grappling hook, or someone could get out here to be a sniper or whatnot. There's multiple multiple ways to get in on different uh levels keeps it interesting uh let's come around on this side roof is working looking pretty good okay so now let's look at the roof in the front here and we have this uh this pillar for support if we need it i don't think we need it right now but we're just as we build helps everything stay in place so let's assume that we're going to if we didn't have this dangle room we would just put we could just put a little um, shed roof going this way. Although then we're gonna have this overhang here. So let's let's assume that we're gonna put a little two by four room in here, and the lower roof to it. So we have what's ideal for this situation. We're actually using two of the um, two of the city builder basics, the corner, right? Two of those make a really quick, easy two by four. Uh, and then I biscuited the uh, roofs to that, and then we could biscuit this right to the side if we want. Um, just like that, so that'll fit in really nicely, kind of flows, covers this whole area. That's feeling pretty good. And then let's put a roof on here. We've got the uh, the wizard hat roof with the uh, transition back and a little backfill piece, all three of those stuck together. That fits something like that. Prototypes are a little bit off, but it's the final ones will fit beautifully. So look at that. So that's a neat, we got a neat multi-level thing going on here. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, we could use the um, we could use the magnetic perch, 
like if we were worried about water pouring down there, we couldn't use the magnetic perch to put something here and it makes it like a little balcony. We could also use that as a base. Um, if we wanted to, if we wanted to connect to another building, we could take the six inch rope bridge and then we could connect that to this magnetic perch like this, or you could have it come in like here or something. Okay, another thing. So that's something we always think about. Like maybe this is going to connect to another building. So we'll, we'll sit on this idea, see what happens with it. But right now this is feeling pretty good. We have a, uh, a fun little playable room in there. More playable space here. Stairs are all connecting. I think this is working. This little tower, it looks pretty neat. Stuff can hit in there. So let's go up one more level. So we, it, the other nice thing about putting a perch here is it encourages some play on the roof, right? Now we have a nice flat uh, space that minis can clearly, you know, sort of can get from balcony up to roof. Uh, you can also just use, you could have, you could have these perches. Ugh. You could also use these perches. You could, you could skip the perch. And then if the players say, hey, can I jump up there and scramble up? You can just use the perch uh, to represent where they are on the roof. Right, and just have that as sort of a mini holder, and you can move it around as they uh, as they move around the roof using the magnets. You can use that, um, but it's nice to, if you put it there. It really tells them, hey, think about climbing up, think about going up there. That's a great spot to uh, hang out and shoot somebody from. Uh, let's go up one more level too. So what we could do is we can continue this roof straight up, right? So we could do two more hips, something like this. Um, and then we could, uh, we could roof it right here with a couple of valleys and some hips, or we could keep going up and let's, uh, let's keep going up because we're looking at multi-level. Let's go one more level and see what fun we can have. So we could have like a, uh, a straight layer, forget this roof for a sec. You could have a straight layer, do something like this transition up, put a roof on it like that. But there's not a ton of playable space out here. So let's change it up. So we'll pop this roof off, and then I've preemptively knew we were going to get there. We have a little balcony here. So this is a two by four floor uh, with the railings on it out there. It sits really nicely over these. Uh, and now we're really beckoning people hey, they're, they're, come on all the way up here. Uh, there's a door. So there's yet another way to get into the building or out of the building. Uh, good cover up there with the railing and clear transition. You can go bump, 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 bump from side to side. And over yonder, we've put, uh, we've got the roof here for the bay window of the balcony. So now this is a really neat sort of fortified spot in there. You've got great cover between the uh, the railing and the roof. Uh, so that's a neat spot, a little harder to sneak in there, maybe. Now, and that's, uh, looks pretty neat. Over here, we've got the uh, window box hanging out and that's a nice open window so maybe the players are thinking about oh you get off if we get on that roof we'd climb in through there there's no window pane or whatever maybe that's an easy way to enter in something to that end um and then we can uh we could top it off with a roof and it feels pretty complete you got a lot of layers different entrances on each layer playable space in almost every layer uh owens put her stairs back on Although we don't have any playable space up here, right? So let's let's maximize our table coverage, right? And this this one this one square foot that we have here, let's get as much playable outdoor space as possible. We have a lot of good playable indoor space, right? There's there's interesting rooms within, but let's get one more thing. So let's let's ditch the regular plain roof. All right, so we could put something like this on there. So this is um, we've instead of just the straight roofs, we're using the hips here and have the big gable peak. Uh, what's fun here is not only is it sort of a decorative front, but the uh, the ridge is sort of is dying for you to put a uh, put a mini on it. And then we've gone up top side here and we have uh, a little doorway in the cupola. So this has a trap door that could connect down to the rest of the uh, house as a way to get up in here. And then we've taken um, a narrow scaffolding platform, one peg connected it into the roof, so that's super sturdy. There's a, a spyglass up here um, and 
sort of another another reason to go uh, all the way up to the top of the roof and then yet another entrance point into the uh, building. So there's really an entrance sort of on every level. There's at least one way to get in. Um, and if you're daring, you could even use the um, the end of the roof ridge. You could theoretically get a mini up there and do something as well. So now we've got playable space on every layer, uh, entrances on every layer, uh, interesting features from each side. All right, so there's just there's a lot to uh, look at, a lot of multi-levels. If we wanted to get even wilder, we could. So we're, we're going to pop the uh, pop the backfill off the back of the transition roof and pop that on the Octagon Tower. And you can slide that in. So we have one more layer, playable layer in here. And then we could put wizard roof on that. Um, so now we have yet another playable level inside. Slash, you could break through those doors or something if you wanted. Voila, we have a very playable, very dynamic, uh, multi-level build with interesting features on every side and tons of playable space. So hopefully this will give you an idea of some of the ways you could approach your multi-level builds and some of the techniques that you could use and some ways to use these pieces. So think about it as you're building. How are we going to make this as dynamic as possible? How we encourage players to go up? How we encourage them to interact with the building on different levels? Uh, and how are we going to make it look cool and visually dynamic? And that should get you started with multi-level building. For more videos like these, check out our YouTube playlist or the Cities Untold Lowtown microsite. You can also reach out to us on Discord or our forums. All the links are in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and now it's back to the anvil.